Hey everyone, Mark Spencer here. As you know, we're not only huge Final Cut Pro users here at Ripple Training, but we also love DaVinci Resolve because of its world-class color grading tools. This week, I'm releasing a movie from my advanced color grading tutorial, which we're running a sale on this week. It's normally $129, but you can get it for $50 off using the code in the description below. So in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you why Resolve's color grading wheels are the best. The log color wheels are another powerful tool in your arsenal for balancing shots. In this lesson, we'll explore the log wheels and see how they differ from, and can be used in conjunction with, the primaries wheels. To understand how the log wheels work, let's start by using them on a gradient clip before working on some footage. I'll press Option or Alt F to get out of the enhanced view. Select the gradient clip and press Option or Alt F again. In the scopes, I'll set them back to the waveform. Our gradient moves from bright white on the left to black on the right, and we can see that representation in the waveform starting from the brightest at the left and moving to the darkest at the right. Now, let's see how this waveform changes as we adjust the primary wheels. We'll start with the lift master wheel and drag it to the left. Notice how the entire line moves. The brightest pixels represented at the top left corner of the waveform don't change at all, but all other luminance values are impacted. The darkest values are impacted the most, but all luminance values are impacted. By the same token, if I drag in the gain master wheel, we begin clipping the whites, but the entire line moves. The blacks move the least, but they all move. In other words, the lift and gain controls affect the entire luminance range, although they're focused primarily either in the shadows or the highlights. If I drag on the gamma master wheel, we get a bow in the entire curve. So we're adjusting the midtones, but we're adjusting all parts of the luminance range. So this pretty clearly demonstrates that these lift, gamma, and gain segments overlap each other significantly. Let's reset those and select instead the log wheels. Now in the log wheels, instead of lift, gamma, and gain, we have shadow, midtone, and highlight. Notice if I now drag in the shadow master wheel, that once again, we are crushing the blacks at the bottom level, but nothing above about 384 moves at all. Only values below 384 move. Everything else stays fixed. By the same token, if I drag in the highlights master wheel, I can once again clip the highlights, but nothing below about 512 or so moves at all. I'm only affecting the highlights and not affecting the lower midtones or the blacks whatsoever. If I drag in the midtones, we get a bow in the middle but it's not affecting the rest of the luminance range. It's only affecting roughly from about 256 to about 640 and nothing else in between. So the log wheels affect very specific luminance ranges and leave other ranges untouched. You can change the range that's impacted in the adjustments bar using the low range and high range parameters. If I drag in the low range, we can have more or less of the curve being affected by the shadows master wheel. In the same way, I can adjust the high range and have more or less of that part of the curve being affected by the highlights master wheel. So the log wheels give us a way to affect very specific ranges of luminance. With this understanding, let's see how we can combine primary wheels and log wheels to correct an image. So before we go to our clip, I'll reset the log wheels. Option or Alt F so we can see our clips. I'll select this low contrast clip and Option or Alt F again for the enhanced viewer. I'll also change our waveform to the RGB parade so we can see the independent red, green, and blue channels in the waveform. Let's start with a primary wheels correction. We have a very low contrast shot, so let's start by expanding the dynamic range. I'll bring down the shadows. And now because this is a dark evening shot, I'd like to bring up the highlights, but only the highlights. If I use the gain control here, I can bring up the highlights, but I'm brightening up 
the entire shot, which I really don't want to do. I'm affecting too much of the luminance range. So instead, I'll bring it up partway. Then I'll go to the log wheels. Now, if I adjust the highlights in the log wheels, we're only bringing up the brightest parts of the shot and leaving the midtones and the shadows virtually untouched. By the same token, if I bring down the shadows, I can do that independently of the highlights or the midtones. So I have much finer control over adjusting specific luminance ranges in the shot, and I can keep the overall shot pretty dark while still making the highlights pop. I'll also try a little midtone adjustment to bring the midtones back down a little bit. These log wheels can also be used to make targeted color adjustments. For example, if I really want to pump up the sunset colors here, I can use the highlight wheel and push into the reds. And notice in the waveform that I'm only affecting the brightest parts of the image as I add those red colors in. Now, if I want to bring some of that down into the reflection in the water, I can adjust my highlight range in the adjustment bar. And I can pull that down which opens up the midtones and brings some of that reflected color into the water. Let's press Command or Control D to toggle the grade off and on. So log wheels can be very powerful when used in combination with the primaries. They're particularly good for over or underexposed footage because you can expand the compressed dynamic range in a narrow band without affecting the rest of the range. And as we've seen, you can make minor tweaks to color balance in those ranges.